Welcome to my channel. Today, I am excited to take on the role of a Turkish Sultan, and together, we embark on a captivating journey behind the scenes of the Grand Harem. Captivating glimpses into the hidden harem world. The Harem, an enigmatic term evoking both captivity and career ascent. Let's delve into the captivating history behind this intriguing concept. Fascinating facts about the Harem. Rooted in the Arabic language, Harem translates to sacred place or forbidden. A symbol of Muslim tradition, it represented the secluded women's quarters strictly off-limits to men, except for the sultan and the eunuchs who served. Throughout the glorious Ottoman Empire, the grandest harem in history thrived for five centuries. With each new dynasty, sultans expanded the harem, welcoming new concubines, resulting in a mesmerizing spectacle of around a thousand odalisks dwelling within the opulent palace of Istanbul. The status of a concubine within the harem hinged upon her proximity to the sultan. Those unfavored endured a life akin to servants, toiling with menial tasks while facing the jeers of more esteemed odalisks. Conversely, if chosen from the crowd and blessed with an heir, a concubine's position soared to that of the sultan's favored wife. This elevation brought substantial material rewards as the sultan bestowed not only precious gifts, but also lavish palaces upon her. Intrigues, aspirations, and luxurious lives. Beyond the enchanting allure of concubines, the women's quarters of the house embraced a captivating world of power, intrigue, and family ties, housing not only the sultan's concubines, but also his relatives, servants, and eunuchs. With such an opulent gathering, it's no surprise that intrigues and quarrels naturally unfolded. Like any close-knit community, Various factions emerged, all vying for the coveted favor of the ruler. In the modern world, the allure of a wealthy sheikh's harem beckons to many women, offering the prospect of securing their financial future for a lifetime through negotiated contracts. In this realm, no other occupation can rival the financial rewards it bestows. While Europe often sympathizes with the concubines, portraying them as unfortunate slaves, women from the East perceive the harem differently. For them, it's an esteemed honor to be chosen, knowing that they and their children will be provided for financially. Once, when a concubine's time in the harem came to an end, she could depart after a decade of service, carrying with her a parting gift of gold and diamond jewelry, exquisite fabrics, and all essentials to embark on a new life elsewhere. Furthermore, they received unwavering support from the Sultan, granting them enduring influence in society. Luxurious entertainments and unexpected dreams. The harem was far from a dull and monotonous place for its female inhabitants. Within its opulent walls, a vibrant world unfolded, where theaters, teachers, musicians, and artists were summoned to captivate the concubines. Amidst such splendor, the Sultan's favored women enjoyed indulgent spa treatments and meticulous attention to their appearance, ensuring they radiated beauty and allure. Surprisingly, some parents from impoverished families intentionally sent their daughters to the harem in exchange for payment. With a formal agreement in place, they would relinquish their parental rights. However, if a girl had any physical or behavioral imperfections, the parents would receive reduced or even no compensation. Operating like an educational institution, the harem provided its concubines with diverse teachings, covering various sciences, etiquette, eloquence, and the art of enchanting a man, even if such skills might never find practical use in their lives. The surviving letters from Sultan's wives revealed that these women were exceptionally well-educated. For many concubines, years might pass without ever encountering the ruler. Although the courtiers praised the ruler's capabilities, he remained a mere mortal who, despite his desires, could not possibly devote attention to every woman. In rare instances where the ruler showed no interest in women, the entire harem endured a life of celibacy. Bureaucracy and intrigue within lavish walls. The harem's intricate structure resembled that of an official institution, complete with a bureaucratic hierarchy that surprises the imagination. Preserved lists of harem residents' positions reveal an astonishing array of roles, including the chief scribe, head of the wine cellar, treasurer, and numerous other well-paid positions. Even within the Sultan's bedroom, bureaucracy extended its reach. By law, Friday nights were dedicated to one of the Sultan's favorite wives, not a concubine, 
Neglecting his marital duties could even lead to a court appearance initiated by a wife. Given the Sultan's many wives, an odalisk meticulously kept a special journal, recording the schedule of the Sultan's visits. As mentioned before, after a specific period, a concubine had the right to leave the harem of her own accord. Surprisingly, many women chose to remain, believing that life beyond the harem's opulence would be far more challenging. The favored wives of sultans held significant sway over them, even intervening in state affairs. In the annals of the Ottoman Empire, an extraordinary period emerged, spanning over a century where women virtually ruled the state, the era now known as the female sultanate. With each new sultan's accession, the standards of beauty for harem residents underwent transformation. For example, Sultan Ibrahim favored women with voluptuous figures, leading to a deliberate search for girls with such body types across the country. Once within the palace walls, they were indulged with sweets and discouraged from leading an active lifestyle to further accentuate their curves. The Sultan's preferred size ranged from 150 to 250 kilograms. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you want to hear new stories.